Let's begin with the questions which are based on mathematical concepts. Question number 31. When we subtract 1 from the 4-digit least number, we get. So here from 4-digit least number. So what is the number which is least 4-digit number, right? So 4-digit least number is 1000, right? This number is 1000, right? So, when we subtract 1 from 1000, so you will get 999, right? So, here 999 is 3 digits highest number, right? So, 3 digit greatest number is 999. Therefore, when we subtract 1 from 4 digit least number, you will get 3 digit highest number, greatest number. Therefore, option B is the right answer. We will get the three digit greatest number. Question 32. While teaching class 6 students, the teacher explains that 8 plus 7 is equal to a whole number and 8 into 7 is equal to a whole number. So, 7 by 8 is not a whole number. Which property he or she explaining this way? Here, students, two whole numbers, 8 and 7. So, both 8 and 7 belong to set of whole numbers, right? So, 8 plus 7, here the operation is addition, right? So, when we add two whole numbers, you will get a whole number, right? So, here the property is addition. And in the second case, it is 8 into 7. Both the numbers belong to set of whole numbers and their product, 8 into 7. So, which is 56, right? 56 also belongs to set of whole numbers, right? Therefore, here the operation is multiplication. Multiplication. Here the property she is explaining is closure property. Because closure property holds good for addition and multiplication, right? So, closure property... property holds good for addition and multiplication multiplication in which set in the set of whole numbers right in the set of whole numbers right if it is a set of integer, so for example, Z, set of integer starts with minus infinity. So minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and so on. So here, closure property holds good for addition, subtraction and even multiplication also. Right? So, so even for subtraction property also. So subtraction operation also, closure property holds good in the set of integers. But in the set of whole numbers, right, whole numbers, so closure property holds good for addition and multiplication, right. Here 7 by 8, here the property is division. So closure property doesn't hold good for division, right. Here 7 by 8 is not a whole number. Instead, it is a rational number, right. A rational number means a number which can be expressed in the form of P by Q. Right. So, where P and Q belongs to set of integers and Q is not equal to 0. Right. So, the such numbers are called rational numbers. Right. So, for two whole numbers, right, 7 and 8, 7 by 8 doesn't belong to set of whole number. Right. Therefore, closure property doesn't hold good for uh, which operation? Division. Right? Closure property doesn't hold good for division. So, here the teacher is explaining which property? Closure property. Right? So, option C is the right answer. Question 33. The least number which can be written in the form of n into n plus 1 into n plus 3 where n is a natural number. So, students, a natural number set, so n is equal to, it starts with 1, right? So, 1, 2, 3 and it continues, right? So, this is a set of natural numbers. Here, the least number can be formed, 
right from the given expression n into n plus 1 into n plus 3 right so let us substitute the value of n as the least number of na natural set of natural number which is 1 1 is the least number in the set of natural numbers so we'll substitute 1 right so it becomes 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 3 it becomes 1 into 2 into 4 so which is equal to 8 right therefore the least number which can be written in the form of n into n plus 1 into n plus 3 is 8 right so 8 can be written in the form of so if n is 1 so 1 into 1 1 plus 1 is 2 and 1 plus 3 is 4 right therefore 8 is the number hence option b Question 34. If we multiply a fraction by itself and divide the product so obtained by its reciprocal, then the fraction so obtained is 18 integer 26 by 27. The original fraction is. So let us consider x as the original fraction or 1 by x, right? So, so let 1 by x be the fraction, original fraction, right? Here, if we multiply a fraction by itself, so 1 by x into 1 by x becomes 1 by x squared. And divide the product so obtained by its reciprocal. So reciprocal of 1 by x is x itself, right? So reciprocal of 1 by x is 1 by 1 by x is x, right? So here, product so obtained, right, he is 1 by x squared. Right. So by its reciprocal, we have to divide the products obtained by the reciprocal of 1 by x. So therefore, 1 by x square divided by reciprocal of x is x. Right. Is equal to. So the fraction so obtained is 18 integer 26 by 27. Right. Therefore, the left hand side becomes 1 by x cube is equal to so 18 integer 26 by 27 is 512 by 27 right here the question is what is the original fraction so we have to find value of 1 by x right here 1 by x cube is nothing but 1 cube by x cube which is equal to 512 by 27 therefore 1 by x is cube root of 512 by 27 Cube root of 512 is 8. Cube root of 27 is 3. Therefore, original fraction 1 by x is 8 by 3. So, you can simplify it. So, 3 into 2 is 6 and the remainder is 2. Therefore, it becomes 2 by 3. So, 2 integer 2 by 3 is the original fraction. Right? Mixed fraction. Therefore, option A is the right answer. Question 35. If 4 by 3 of the difference of 2 integer 1 by 4 and 1 integer 2 by 3 is added to 1 by 2 of half of the difference of 2 integer 1 by 3 and 1 integer 2 by 7, then the result is. So here students, let us find the difference of first two mixed fractions, right? 2 integer 1 by 4 and 1 integer 2 by 3 and difference of these two, last two uh, mixed fractions, right? So here, 2 integer 1 by 4 minus 1 integer 2 by 3. So the difference becomes, so 4 into 2, 8 plus 1, 9 by 4 minus 1 integer 2 by 3 is nothing but 5 by 3. Since uh, 12 is the LCM, so 4 into 3 is 12, hence 9 into 3. 27 minus 3 into 4 is 12. So 5 into 4 becomes 20. So here 7 by 12 is the difference between first two mixed fractions. We'll consider 4 by 3 of the difference later, right? And secondly, we'll consider the difference between last two mixed fractions. 2 integer 1 by 3 minus 1 integer 2 by 7. So can be written as 2 integer 1 by 3 is nothing but 7 by 3. Minus 7, 1 integer 2 by 7 means 7 plus 2 is 9 by 7, right? Here the LCM is 21, right? So 3 into 7, hence 7 into 7, 49. 
minus 7 into 3 is 21. So 9 into 3, 27. So you have 22 by 21 as the difference between last two. And it is given that 4 by 3 of, so 4 by 3 of the difference of these two fractions. So difference of these two first two fractions is 7 by 12. So 4 by 3 of 7 by 12 is added to plus, right? 1 by 2 of half of the difference of last two fractions is 22 by 21. Then the result is, right? So here 4 into 3 is 12. So you have 7 by 9 plus 2 into 11. You have 11 by 21. Here 21 into 3 is 63 and 9 into 7 is 63. So 63 is the LCM. And so since 9 into 7 is 63, so numerator becomes 7 into 7, which is 49. Plus here 21 into 3 is 63. Hence 11 into 3 is 33. Right? So 49 plus 33 is 82 by denominator is 63. Therefore, the result is 82 by 63, option B. Question 36. The curved surface area of a right circular cylinder is one third of its total surface area. If base radius of the cylinder is 8 cm, then volume of the cylinder is. So students, it is given that curved surface area. So curved surface area, CSA. Right, So, of a right circular cylinder is one third of total surface area. Right? Total surface area. So, here curved surface area of a right circular cylinder. So, if you consider this as a cylinder, right? Its base radius is given. So, here this is base radius. R is 8 centimeter. So, curved surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi rh. 2 pi r into h. Here r is base radius. So h is height of the cylinder. Right. So which is equal to one third of total surface area. So total surface of area of the cylinder is 2 pi r into r plus h. Right. So 2 pi r into r plus h is the total surface area. So the relation between curved surface area and total surface area is like this. So one third of total surface area. So here, what is asked in the question? Volume of the cylinder. So here, to find volume of the cylinder, so we are using pi r square h. We need base radius and height of the cylinder. So how to find height of the cylinder? Using the given relation. So 2 pi r h, r h is equal to 1 by 3 into 2 pi r into r plus h. Let us simplify this, right? So in this, we can cancel 2 pi r and 2 pi r, right? So, we can equate h to r plus h by 3. Therefore, 3 h becomes r plus h. So, take this h to LHS part, it becomes 2 h is equal to r. Right? Therefore, height of the cylinder is r by 2. Here, r is base radius, which is 8 centimeter by 2 is 4 centimeter. Here, 4 centimeter is height of the cylinder. Right? Height of the cylinder. So here the question is to find volume of the cylinder. So volume is equal to V is equal to pi r square h. We'll leave pi as it is, right? Because in the options, we have the numbers multiplied by pi, right? In each, each case. Therefore, no need to substitute the value of pi. Here r is how much? 8 centimeter. So it is 8 square into height is 4 centimeter, right? Therefore, pi into 8 square is 64 into 4 into 4. Therefore, so 16 to 4 is 24 and 4 into 4 is 16. So it is 256 pi. So volume of the cylinder is 256 pi centimeter cube. So the unit is centimeter cube. Therefore, option A is the right answer. Right? 256 pi is the right answer. Question 37. The inner circumference of a 7 meter wide circular race track is 440 meter. Then the radius of the outer circle is use pi as 22 by 7. So students will consider 
the inner circumference of the race track, right? So this, so it measures to 440 meters, right? And we'll consider outer circumference also, right? So here, width of the race track is 7 meters, 7 meter width. So here we need to find radius of the outer circle. So that means from the center, right? To the circumference means radius of the outer track, right? Whereas from the center to the circumference of the inner circle gives radius of the inner track, right? Here R is outer track radius, outer track radius, whereas a small r is inner track radius, inner track radius. Right. So let us find inner track radius. Right. So inner track radius plus width of the track, which is 7 meter, gives outer track radius. Right. Here, outer track radius R is equal to small r inner track radius plus width of the track, which is 7 meter. Right. So let us find inner track radius. So using the information that the circumference of the inner track is 440 meter, right? So circumference, circumference is 440 meter, right? Of the inner track. The formula says 2 pi r. So track is in circular shape, right? So 2 pi r, circumference of a circle is 2 pi r is 440. Therefore, r is, inner circle radius is 440 by 2 pi. So pi is 22 by 7. The 7 goes to numerator. So 22 into 2 is 44. So it is 20 and 2 into 10. So inner circle radius is 70 meters. Therefore, so radius of the outer track is capital R is small r which is 70 meters plus 7. Therefore, it is 77 meters. Right? Therefore, Option C is the right answer. Question 38. The areas of the curved surface and base of a right circular cylinder are A square centimeter and B square centimeter respectively. The height of the cylinder is... So students will consider a right circular cylinder. Right? Like this. Here... Areas of curved surface, right? Curved surface area of a right circular cylinder. So the formula says 2 pi rh, right? So here, curved surface area, CSA, is equal to 2 pi r into h. Whereas area of base of the right circular cylinder. So base of a circular cylinder means, so area of the circle, right? So area of base. Area of the base is, so base is in circular shape. Therefore, its area becomes pi r square, right? It is given that curved surface area is equal to a square centimeter, a centimeter square. And area of the base is b centimeter square. So here we need to find height of the cylinder, right? So here to find height, right? So use first equation. So curved surface area formula in which if you substitute the value of r, you can easily get the height of the cylinder. For that, let us consider area of the base, right? So area of the base is pi r square, which is b. Therefore, r square becomes b by pi, right? Therefore, r is equal to square root of b by pi, right? So consider this as 2. So let us substitute the value of r in equation 1. So equation 1 becomes 2 pi into r is root of b by pi, right? Into h is a, right? So here we need value of h. Therefore, h is a divided by 2 pi into root of b by pi, right? Here, students, we can write pi as root pi into root pi, right? So a divided by 2 into... I'll write pi as root pi into root pi, right? Into root of b by pi can be written as root b by root pi. So that we can cancel 1 pi and 1 pi, both from numerator and denominator. 
right? So you will have a by root of, right? Root of pi into root of b into 2, right? Whereas root of pi into root of b, since they have same roots, right? They, therefore, we can write root pi into root b as root of pi into b, right? Therefore, so height of the cylinder h is equal to a divided by 2 into root pi into b, right? Therefore, so get the options. Yes, option C is the right answer. Question 39. Which of the following is a trinomial? Trinomial means the expression which contains three terms, right? Here, tri means three, right? Tri means three. Nominal means terms, right? Nominal means terms. So, the expression which has three terms is called a trinomial term, right? Say so for so among four options. So, here the first option is 3x square. It is 3x square plus 7. And the second one is x cube plus 10. So, here both the options have two terms. So one is 3x square and another term is 7 in first option. Whereas, in the second option, first term is x cube, second term is 10. So, in the third option, we have 3x square plus 3x plus 7. We have three terms in third option 3, right? So, there are three terms in option 3. Therefore, so third expression is a trinomial expression, right? 3x square plus 3x plus 7. Hence, option C is the right answer. Whereas, option D has four terms, right? 3x cube plus 3x square plus 3x plus 3. Right? So, here the constant, last number constant should also be considered as a term. Right? Therefore, option D has four terms, whereas option 3 has, option C has three terms, hence it is a trinomial. Right? Question 40. The denominator of a rational number is greater than its numerator by 7. If the numerator is increased by 20 and the denominator is decreased by 3, the number obtained is 4 by 3. Then the rational number is. So, we will consider the rational number. So, rational number is nothing but which can be written in the form of P by Q which has a numerator and denominator and denominator where Q is not equal to 0 and P and Q belongs to set of integers, right? So, such numbers are called rational numbers, right? So, we will consider a rational number. So, in which denominator is greater than its numerator by 7. So, we will consider numerator as X, right? So, numerator as X and denominator becomes denominator so is greater than its numerator by 7 so it becomes x plus 7 therefore the rational number is x by x plus 7 right x by x plus 7 so moving further if numerator is increased by 20 right if numerator so numerator is increased by 20 means if it is x plus 20 and the denominator, denominator is decreased by 3. So, original denominator is x plus 7. So, when it is decreased by 3, it becomes x plus 7 minus 3. Right? So, the number obtained is 4 by 3. So, the number obtained becomes a numerator by denominator. So, x plus 20 by x plus 4 is equal to, so the number obtained is 4 by 3. Right? Therefore, the rational number is, therefore, the number x by x plus 7 is. What is that rational number? So, to find that, we have to find the value of x, right? Then only we will get the rational number. So, using this relation, x plus 20 by x plus 4 is equal to 4 by 3, we will find the value of x. So, 3 into x plus 20 is equal to 4 into x plus 4, right? So, here 3x plus 60 is 4x plus 16. 4 into 4 is 16. Therefore, value of x is 60 by, sorry, 60 minus 16, which is 44. Value of x is 44, right? Here, the rational number. So, the question is to find the rational number, right? So, rational number is x by x plus 7, where x is 44 by x plus 7 is 44 plus 7, right? Therefore, 44 by 51, 
is the rational number. Right? Therefore, option B is the right answer. Right? So, you can verify the answer by taking the second case. If the numerator is increased by 20, so numerator becomes 44 plus 20, which is 64. And the denominator becomes x plus 4. Right? So, 44 plus 4 is 50. The number so obtained is 4 by 3. Right? So, you have to simplify it. Right? Therefore, option B is the right answer. Question 41. On selling an article for 3,290 rupees, there is a loss of 6%. Then cost price of the article is... So, students, if there is a loss of 6%, that means cost price is more than selling price, right? So then only there will be a loss, right? So, if there is a loss, means cost price is greater than selling price, right? So, here we need to find cost price of the article, right? So, we know the formula for loss percentage, so which is equal to, since cost price is greater, so we'll take cost price minus selling price, over the cost price, right? Into 100. Here, cost price minus selling price means loss, right? So, loss is nothing but cost price minus selling price, right? So, so the meaning of this formula means for certain cost price, there is a loss, right? So, for so and so rupees, say for example, for 4,000 rupees cost price, there is a loss of so and so rupees, right? Therefore, for 100, so which is nothing but loss percentage, right? Therefore, here, so we have to find cost price of the article. So, loss percentage is given, which is 6, which is equal to cost price minus Selling price of the article is given. On selling an article for 3,290 rupees. So, 3,290 is selling price of the article. So, over the cost price, divided by cost price into 100. Right? Simplify it. So, here 6 into cost price is equal to. So, 100 into cost price minus 3,290. It becomes 100 into cost price. Minus 3,290 into 100. So, two more zeros. Right? So, it becomes 3,29,000. Therefore, so 100 minus 100 cost price minus 6 cost price. Right? So, it becomes 94 cost price is equal to 3,29,000. Therefore, cost price is equal to 3,29,000 divided by 94 right so here students 94 so we'll start with the 2 right so 2 into 4 27 so here it is 2 into 1 2 into 6 2 into 4 then 2 into 5 2 zeros right is for 1 4 6 5 divisible by 47 you have to check, right? So, 1, sorry, 1, 6, 4, 5, double 0, divided by 47. So, 47 into 3. So, this will be equal to 7 into 3, 21. So, 141, right? So, 3 is the remainder and here it is 2. So, now borrow 5, right? So, it becomes 47 into 5. Since 14 into 5 is 200, 7 into 5 is 35, it becomes 235. Right? Therefore, so two zeros. So 3500 is the cost price of the article. Right? So cost price is 3500 and the selling price is 3219. Therefore, there is a loss of 6%. 6%. Right? So that means for 100 rupees cost price, if cost price is 100 rupees, loss becomes 6 rupees. Right? Loss percentage meaning is for 100 rupees cost price, loss is 6 rupees. That means selling price will be 94 rupees. Right? Therefore, for 3500 rupees cost price, 
So selling price is 3290 rupees. Therefore, there is a loss of 6%, right? Therefore, for the given question, answer is option D. 3500 is cost price of the article. Question 42. If sum of the expressions, so minus 3x cube y square plus 2x square y cube and minus 5y raised to 4 minus 3x square y cube is subtracted from the next expression. So then the coefficient of y raised to 4 in the result is. So students, let us consider sum of the first two expressions, right? So we'll consider the sum. So here the first two expressions are minus 3x raised to 2, 3, y raised to 2 plus 2x square y cube, right? Plus the second term is minus 5y raised to 4 minus 3x square y cube. So sum of these two terms is, so here x square y cube. So the second and the fourth term, right? 2x square y cube minus 3x square y cube. These are similar terms, right? So, except these two, the remaining two are not similar, right? So, we'll leave as it is minus 3x cube y square, right? Minus 5y raised to 4 and plus 2x square y cube minus 3x square y cube becomes minus 6 square y cube, right? So, here students, when this part, the sum of these two expressions is subtracted from the next expression, right? Therefore, so we'll consider x cube y square. So this expression, right? So x cube y square plus x raised to 4 plus x square y cube plus y raised to 4, right? From this expression, subtract the sum of first two expressions, right? Minus, minus 3 x cube y square minus 5 y raised to 4 minus x square y cube, right, which is equal to, so we'll club all similar terms together. Here is x cube y square and we have x cube y square here, right? So x cube y square here minus of minus 3x cube y square becomes plus 3x cube y square plus x raised to 4, we'll leave as it is, right? So we have x square y cube and minus of minus x square y cube, right? Plus x square y cube. So minus of minus becomes plus x square y cube. And we have y cube separately, right? Do we have y cube here? So x square y cube plus y raised to 4. This is y raised to 4, right? So plus y raised to 4. Here, minus of minus y raised to 4 is plus 5, 5 into y raised to 4. Right? Therefore, we have, so x cube y square plus 3x three, three cube y square is 4x cube y square plus x raised to 4 plus 2x square y cube. Right? So, club these two. And plus y raised to 4 plus 5 y raised to 4 is 6 y raised to 4. Right? Here the question is coefficient of y raised to 4 in the result. In the result, coefficient of y raised to 4 is 6 plus 6. Right? So, option A is the right answer. Right? So, coefficient of y raised to 4 is 6. Question 43. So 15 into x square minus 2 x minus 15 divided by 25 into x plus 3 into x square minus 25 is equal to. So here students will consider numerator and denominator part separately. Except these two whole numbers, right? So we'll consider the algebraic terms. So x square minus 2 x minus 15. So here we'll split the midterm, right? So that means we are factorizing the given expression, right? So factorizing factorizing the given expression here x square so minus 2x can be written as minus 5x plus 3x 
so that minus 5 into plus 3 becomes minus 15, which is the last term, right? So students, so while solving a quadratic equation, there are two methods to find the value of x. One is by factorization method. That means splitting the middle term. So another is using the formula. Here, students, we are not going to find the value of x. We are just factorizing, right? Factorizing the expression or factorizing the quadratic uh, expression not exactly the equation it is an e expression right so let us factorize it here take first two terms where x is common so we have x minus 5 as the remaining term so whereas in the last two terms we have 3 as common and the remaining term is x minus 5 therefore we have x minus 5 into x plus 3 these two are factors of the given expression, right? x square minus 2x minus 15. Whereas the denominator is, so x plus 3 into x square minus 25. Here we'll leave x plus 3 as it is, whereas x square minus 25 is in the form of a square minus b square, right? So you can mention a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b, a minus b. Therefore, x square minus 25 can be written as, so x plus 5, since 25 is a square of 5, right? x plus 5 into x minus 5, right? So let us consider this 1 and 2. Therefore, the given expression becomes, right? So we'll directly write the given expression as a 15 into x square minus 2x minus 15 is, so first one, so x minus 5 into x plus 3 divided by, so 25, denominator is 25 into x plus 3, whereas x square minus 25 is x plus 5 into x minus 5. So x plus 5 into x minus 5. Here students, we can cancel x minus 5 and x minus 5 and x plus 3 and x plus 3. So, 5 into 3 is 15, 5 into 5 is 25. Therefore, we have 3 by 5 into x plus 5 as the final answer, right? So, 3 by 5 into x plus 5. So, option D is the right answer. Question 44. Which of the following is a Pythagorean triplet whose one number is 12? So students, Pythagorean triplet means the sides of a right angle triangle, right? Pythagoras theorem holds good for a right angle triangle, right? So the Pythagorean triplets are nothing but sides of sides of a right angle triangle. Right angled triangle, right? So the condition for right angle triangle is nothing but the Pythago Pythagoras theorem, right? So here, square of the hypotenuse, if ABC is a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, AC square, is equal to, so sum of the squares of remaining two sides. So AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square, right? Where AC, AB, and BC are Pythagorean triplets, right? So, Pythagorean triplets are AC, AB and BC, where AC is, AC is greatest side, longest side, right? That means hypotenuse, hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is the greatest side or longest side. So, to decide Pythagorean triplet, First, we have to consider the greatest side. So, in first option, greatest side is 16, right? So, we'll start with option A. So, 16 square is 256. So, this should be sum of the squares of remaining two sides. So, here we'll consider remaining two sides and the sum of their squares. So, 8 square plus 12 square. Right? So, the remaining two sides are 8 and 12, right? 8 square is 64 plus 12 square is 144. So, you will get 208, right? So, which is not equal to 16 square. So, square of the largest side, which is square of the hypotenuse, is not equal to sum of the squares of remaining two sides, right? Therefore, option A is not a Pythagorean triplet. 
So consider option B, right? So in which the greatest side is 37, right? So we'll consider 37 square. So 37 into 37, you will get 1,369. Now we'll take sum of the squares of remaining two sides. 12 square plus 35 square, right? So here 12 square is 144 plus 35 square is 1,225. Right, so 1,225 plus 144 is 1,369, 1,369, which is nothing but 37 square. So square of the greatest side, square of the hypotenuse is equal to, so sum of the squares of remaining two sides. Therefore, 12, 35 and 37, these three are Pythagorean triplets. Right, so that means with this measurement, so you can construct a right angle triangle. Right, so with hypotenuse 37, maybe centimeter or meter, so the remaining two sides are 12 and 35. Right, therefore, option B is the right answer. Question 45 How many edges does a polyhedron with eight faces and 12 vertices have? So, if a polyhedron has 8 faces and 12 vertices, so how many edges does it have, right? That means, so in any regular polyhedron, right? So, the relation between number of faces, vertices and edges is, so F plus V minus E is equal to 2, right? For any polyhedron. So, it may be an octagon or it may be a cuboid or cube or prism or pyramid, any polyhedron it may be, right? So number of faces here, F, F is nothing but number of faces, V means number of vertices and E means number of edges. In any polyhedron, the relation between faces, vertices and edges is F plus V minus E is equal to two, right? So in the given polyhedron, there are eight faces. So we'll consider F as 8 and 12 vertices. 8 plus 12 minus E, number of edges, is always 2, right? Here we need number of edges. How many edges does this polyhedron have, right? Therefore, number of edges becomes, so 8 plus 12, 20 minus 2, which is 18, right? So the given polyhedron has 18 edges. Therefore, option C is the right answer. Question number 46. Which of the following is true in case of an isosceles trapezium? So, isosceles means so two equal sides, right? So, two equal sides, right? So, here the first, first option is only two adjacent sides are of equal length. So, in an isosceles trapezium, so adjacent sides cannot be of equal length, right? So, here option C, only non-parallel sides are of equal length. So, consider a trapezium like this, right? So, in case of an isosceles trapezium, so these two are non-parallel sides, right? So, if you consider A, B, C, D as a trapezium, here A, B is, a, B is parallel to C, D, right? A, B is parallel to C, D. Whereas, A, D is not parallel to, not parallel to B, C. So, non-parallel sides are A, D and B, C, right? If A, D is equal to B, C, it becomes a an isosceles trapezium, right? AD is equal to BC, then only it becomes an isosceles trapezium, right? If AB is equal to CD, so for example, AB is equal to CD, these two parallel sides are equal, for example, then it becomes which shape? So it may become a rectangle or a square, right? So it doesn't become uh, a trapezium, right? Instead, it becomes a square or a rectangle. Right. So, for example, AB is equal to CD. So, in this case, it becomes a square or a rectangle. Right. Therefore, so 
to get an isosceles trapezium, right? So non-parallel sides should be of equal length, not the parallel sides. Hence, option C is the right answer. Question 47. Number of degrees in 3 and 1 half of a right angle is. So 3 and 1 half of a right angle means. So 3 plus half. Right. 3 plus half of a right angle. Right angle. Right. So or you can consider it as 3 right angles plus half right angle. Plus Half right angle. Both are same. Right? So, right angle means 90 degree. Right? So, 3 plus half of a rectangle. Sorry, right angle means. So, I will consider first one. Right? Right? So, first one becomes 3 plus half into 90 degree. So, it becomes 7 by 2. Right? 7 by 2 into 90 degree. Therefore, so 2 into 45, therefore 45 into 7. So 7 into 5, 35. 28 plus 3, 31, right? So 315 degree, right? So 3 and 1 half of a right angle is 315 degree. Hence, option B is the right answer. If you take 3 right angle, second case, 3 right angle plus half right, right angle. So 3 right angle means 3 into 90 degree. Plus half of right angle means half into 90 degree. Right? It becomes 3 into 90 is 270 plus half of 90 is 45. So 270 plus 45 is again 315 degree. Right? Therefore, option B is the right answer. Question 48. If the angles of a quadrilateral are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4, then what is the measure of the greatest angle of the quadrilateral? So here based on the ratio, you can say this 4, right? So this 4 is the greatest angle, right? So we'll consider any quadrilateral like this. So the angles are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4, right? We know that some of the interior angles in a regular or it may be an irregular quadrilateral, is always 360 degree, right? Sum of the interior angles, interior angles in a quadrilateral is always 360 degree. So, we will consider first angle as 1x, which is x, plus second angle as 2x, plus third angle as 3x, plus fourth angle as 4x is always 360 degree, right? So it becomes a 4 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 9 plus 1, 10x. So 10x is 360 degree. Therefore, x is 360 by 10, which is 36, 36 degree. Here, the measure of greatest angle, right? Greatest angle is 4x. So greatest is 4x. Therefore, it is 4 into 36. x is 36 here. So, 4 into 6, 24. So yes, 144. Greatest angle measures 144 degree, right? And so, option C is the right answer. Question 49. If the mean of 10 numbers is 96 and one of the numbers is 150, then what is the mean of the remaining 9 numbers? Here, students, for a given observation, Mean is always a sum of the observations and number of observations, right? Sum of all observations divided by sum of all observations divided by number of observations, right? Number of observations. So here it is given that mean of 10 numbers. There are 10 observations and mean is given. So it is 96, right? So let us find sum of 10 observations, right? Using mean and number of observations. Here, so sum of 10 observations. 10 observations is equal to, so mean of 10 observations into so, number of observations, right? Number of observations according to the formula. 
we are considering. Why do we need sum of 10 observations? Because we have to find the value of sum of 9 observations. Because at the end, we are going to find mean of the remaining 9 numbers. Right? So, remaining 9 numbers. So, for that, what is sum of 9 observations? Right? So, for that, we need sum of 10 observations. Since one of the numbers is already given. Right? So, sum of 10 observations means... So, it's mean. So, it is 96 into 10. Number of observation is 10. Therefore, 960 is sum of 10 observations. And one number is given. Right? So, one number is 150. Therefore, sum of 9 observations. 9 observations. Here, one number is 150. We'll subtract that number from sum of 10 observations, right? So 960, which is sum of 10 observations, minus 150. You will get 810. So 810 is sum of 9 observations, right? Divided by number of observations. That is 9 observations gives their mean, right? Therefore, mean of 9 observations, right? 9 observation is... Sum of, from the formula, it is sum of 9 observations, 8, 10, divided by number of observations we are considering here is only 9, right? Therefore, 9 into 9 is 81, hence 9 into 90 is 8, 10, right? So, mean of 9 observations is 90, right? So, here option D is the right answer. Question number 50. If a dice is thrown, then what is the probability of getting a prime number? Here students, what is prime number? So a number which is divisible by 1 and the number itself. Right? Then the number is called prime number. Right? So the numbers which are divisible by only two numbers. So 1 and the number itself. For example, 7 is a prime number which is divisible by 1 and the number itself. Right? And next comes 11. Then comes 13, 17, 19, right? So 23, these are the numbers which are divisible by 1 and the number itself, right? So such numbers are called prime numbers, which are divisible by 1 and the number itself. Number itself. So here the question is, when a dice is thrown, what is the probability of getting a prime number? So what is probability, first of all? Probability, the formula says, so out of total outcomes, so how many outcomes we are considering, how many outcomes are favorable is called probability. So the formula says, favorable outcomes, favorable outcomes, what we need out of total outcomes, right? So divided by total outcomes. Therefore here, when a dice is thrown, so you may get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. In that, how many prime numbers we may get? That is called the probability, right? So prime numbers from 1 to 6. There are 6 faces in a dice. So you... You can get uh, the numbers from 1 to 6, right? So, prime numbers from 1 to 6. So, here 1 is not a prime number. So, 2 is a prime number. Then 3 is a prime number. Next comes 5. So, these are the numbers from 1 to 6, uh, which are divisible by 1 and the number itself, which are prime numbers. Therefore, the required probability probability of getting a prime number is so how many prime numbers are there three numbers three prime numbers are there so between one and six or from one to six three prime numbers are there therefore out of total outcomes so out of six numbers here total outcomes are six numbers so how many numbers are prime numbers three are prime numbers three prime numbers Right? Here, favorable outcomes are prime numbers. That means number of prime numbers are favorable outcomes. And total outcomes are total numbers we are considering here. Right? Therefore, 3 by 6 is the probability. So, or 
1 by 2 is the probability, which means out of 2, right? Out of 2, so we will get 1 prime number, right? So if once the dice is thrown, so you may get a prime number or you may not get a prime number. If twice the dice is thrown, there is a chance of getting one prime number, right? So either two, three or five you may get, right? Therefore, the probability is one by two, right? Hence, option B is the right answer. So with this, I'm completing the mathematics mathematics part of this paper if you want to practice such questions and many more entrance exam question papers please visit our website www.examsnet.com you can also download our app the link is given in the description box